Beatrice, could you talk a little bit about what you've been doing here in the United States the last few weeks in terms of educating United Methodists about Ebola? Um, I've, I came here in July to have meetings for a community-based primary health care project. But then the Ebola incident escalated and widespread in Sierra Leone. So I have been visiting churches and speaking. I have been to like Tennessee, I've been to Texas now, I've been going to Nebraska, I've been to Indiana, all speaking on Ebola. And what is this, the summary of the message you're telling United Methodists about where the situation stands in Sierra Leone? I am telling the United Methodists in the United States what activities the United Methodists in Sierra Leone have been involved in and making requests as to what United Methodists here can do to help us in the response to Ebola. You mentioned in your talk here today in the North Texas Conference that the disease has devastated Sierra Leone in different ways. Can you summarize some of the ways in which your country, Sierra Leone is suffering from some people? The disease has not only affected the fabric of our humanness, it has affected the economy of the country, the health systems have all broken down, the the means of living, you know, for common people, like markets, markets cannot meet. So people are not raising the basic uh, monies that they use to, for their survival. Markets cannot meet. Only few people can even go to the market because they're of fear of Ebola. Education system is closed. Schools have been closed since June. And now... There is a challenge to keep those young people out of school in homes. Some of them, I'm sure, have been infected and died. So that's how much the universities, all those uh, uh, educational institutions have been closed. Also, the social life, our social fabric, our cultural fa fabric, all is broken down. For example, we are a touching community. We touch people, we greet by shaking hands, we greet by hugging. Ebola has made us to learn not to greet, not to shake hands. We bow down with our arms crossed across our chest to honor people. We could wave or give you a thumbs up, which is very difficult to adopt. But we have had to adopt it for, to save our lives. And United Methodist Church and other religious groups there, including Muslim groups, have come together to communicate that message. Yes, they have. One of the first responses we had was by the leaders, the, the religious leaders task force that was formed, which included Muslims, Catholics, all the religious denominations in Sierra Leone. They came together and said, we, we came together to, to help end the civil war. We have to work together to end the, the, res, the, the, the Ebola from our communities. So they were the first organization that started giving education uh, uh, for the prevention of Ebola. Their education based on even giving authority to all their leaders, the Muslim uh, clerics who, who would uh, call prayers, the, the pastors, everybody has been admonished to uh, speak on Ebola at each sermon. Speak on Ebola on any Friday meeting for Muslims. This is the first time those two have come together uh, to really make an impact. And now they continue, that task force continues to meet, to educate, to know what are the issues and to what kind of strategies to improve the situation of Ebola? Talk a little bit, if you would, about malaria and Ebola and the confusion uh, you've seen in Sierra Leone yes. about that. The, trans the, 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 the symptoms of Ebola is so similar to that of malaria. With um, Ebola, 
you have malaise, general malaise, you have a headache, you have fever. And sometimes you vomit. Those are the same symptoms we have if you have malaria. So it is so, it's been so difficult to be able to differentiate between uh, an infection of Ebola and infection of malaria. Hence, we lost a lot of health workers because they have been treating Ebola patients for malaria as malaria patients. And in the process, they got, they, they got themselves infected. And we lost, we've lost more than 150 health workers in Sierra Leone to Ebola. So that's how difficult it has been for health workers to be able to differentiate between the two uh, disease conditions that are so similar in symptoms. And um, speak a little, if you would, about what specifically you would encourage United Methodist individuals and churches to do to be of help at this point. We want to ask our brothers and sisters who are United Methodists, and even those who may hear of this message, who may read it, so help us with funds, with materials, so that if we have uh, funds, we have money, we could, we could uh, buy some of the materials we need in country. But there are a lot of materials that cannot be, that are not available in Sierra Leone. But those funds, if sent to UMCO, United Methodist Committee on Relief, at the General Board of Global Ministries, New York, those funds will get to us so that we can buy the necessary materials. And they, too, can use those funds to buy materials and things we need that are not available in country. You're here in Dallas where we have and the one case. I'm sorry, go ahead. Also, we are asking our brothers and sisters to continue in prayer, to pray for us, to pray for our leaders, to pray for even the countries that are willing to help us so that their hearts can be with us, so that we can, together we can be able to eradicate uh, Ebola. You mentioned how difficult the situation is, but you are hopeful. Um, uh, speak about that, if you will. Yes. It is devastating. It is difficult. But for me, nothing is impossible for God. For God, all things are possible. And I know soon we are going to see Ebola as history. Can you imagine a Sierra Leone without Ebola? Can you imagine all our schools, our colleges will be in session? Can you imagine if we didn't have Ebola, how much, how much development we continue? Can you imagine how many lives can be saved without Ebola? That would be a big achievement, not only for Sierra Leone, but mankind and to, of, uh, for even uh, the world generally. And you're speaking here from Dallas. It has been emotional to you to, to witness all the attention on one case of Ebola here in Dallas and, and speak about the disparity you mentioned. Uh, uh, I, I was really taken the day I saw the response uh, on TV. I saw it on TV, the response of, uh, to the Ebola incident of one family. And the day they went to take the family to be quarantined, you had the fire force, you had a whole a private uh, cleaning agent, you had the police, you had so many workers, so many people, all just to work with a family of four. If we in Sierra Leone and Guinea or Liberia would have a third of those facilities, if we had a third of those facilities, I am sure we would have controlled Ebola by now. The disparity touched me, and I was so, I just thought, I, I would say I froze in the chair. I said, for one family, look at how much resources is available. Will that happen to us? This is the appeal we are making. Just let us have even if it's a third of that facilities, those facilities are available to our communities, to our countries that are infected with Ebola. 
And when are you scheduled to return to Sierra Leone? I am scheduled to return on the 21st of October. And I don't even know what I'm going to meet once I get in, in country. But you're not afraid to go. You want to go. Uh, it's, a, it's a calling. I'm a missionary for the United Methodist Church. I'm a health worker. And I'm a family member. I have those three aspects compelling me to go back. 